<laughs> My name is Dave Howard. Everybody calls me Howie. I am also known as the brewmaster here at Wachusett Brewing Company. Um, and that's the job that I'm entitled with and charged to follow through. <laughs> Primary function is to make great beer for all the good people that spend good money to buy good beer um, and coordinate all the resources and the other brewers that work here uh, and together as a team to make a good product that we can sell uh, out in the marketplace and, and keep people really happy with what we do for them. I have four great brewers. I have Dave who's been with me for 10 years. I have Pete who's been here for at least three years. I have Paul who was here for a few years and joined the Army for a few years and came back to us. Um, and then we have a, a fairly new recruit that's been here for about a year and a half called Seth. Seth is a very accomplished brewer and sellerman also. And with, with, a, with that team of people, we, we, we create uh, uh, some really good ideas and some really good, some good beers here. It all pretty much starts about the same way. We, we don't want to uh, brew a beer the way we want to brew. We want to brew beers for the people that want us to brew beers for them. We want to be different like that. We don't want you to be Wachusett's beer. We want it to be WAF's beer or Brand X's beer. So the first step was to meet with some of the gentlemen from WAF and actually ask them what they want. Uh, and that's basically how all the recipes start here is somebody like Ned, the president, may have an idea. And, and the reality is for the brew team is, is when the idea is laid down in the specifics, it's to put it all on paper and make it kind of the dream become a reality. Uh, which, you know, it's somewhat of a challenge, but it's interesting. After being here 19 years, it gets a little bit easier because you know your system. We get the idea where they want to be alcohol level-wise and, and bitterness-wise and the colors. And then usually it amounts to me scribbling on a piece of paper, which this is actually it right here. This is like your preliminary recipe. Um, this gets us in the ballpark. Uh, from there, it actually goes to a brew sheet, which isn't the actual brew sheet, but it would look like that. And that's when it goes into full production. Um, we like to write it down, we like to think about it, uh, we like to look at this particular beer being a reddish type of ale, we like to really look at all the, the things we want to add to it and we want to do to make it unique. So a lot of it's scribbling on paper, racing, and then usually you get a list and you start eliminating the list and you go to the, your, your top picks for what you want to do and you make sure everybody's happy with it, run it by the other brewers to get their input and then off we go to production. To get it to come out the way that people expect it to come out, uh, every brew system is unique. Uh, ours in particular, because we have a lot of Yankee Ingenuity homemade equipment here. Um, you gotta get all the people on the same page to do, you know, to make it come out right. But it's really knowing what your system does because as it starts, it changes through the whole process. So over the course of this beer, it took about 11 days to go from its actual birth to the package. Um, it can change in color. Uh, there's certain utilizations that go on there. There's a whole ton of chemical reactions that go on there. So you really got to get a rough idea of what's going to happen so you can be in the ballpark in the first one. It's never very easy to hit a beer right on the head on the first try. But what you try to do is you try to get really, really close. And then you talk with the people that wanted the beer and say, is there anything we can change on it? What did you like? What didn't you like? And you make small improvements. But small improvements are always made anyways. We do that with our own products. We're always looking to go forward every day a tiny, tiny bit. So, I mean, if you took some of our beers from five, eight years ago and compared them to the same beer today, they would be very noticeably different. Um, but what you have to do in this industry is you have to evolve. You can't stagnate. Um, you know, stagnation is death. I mean, everybody progresses here, and we, we have to move with the flow. Start to finish, um, usually about 11 days. If it's a dry hopped beer, it takes an extra seven because you want it to sit on the dry hops to get that essence out of the hops. Well, after our conversation with, with, with the WAF uh, people, we kind of said, hey, you know, what you guys were looking for, you wanted something that was a really nice garnet red, had some really good eye appeal, which I think we really got on that, looking at what I've seen today. Uh, but we wanted something also that was not too big on alcohol. So you're looking at 5%, very easy to drink, not big on what they call the IBU scale, which is the bitterness end of it. It's about 27, 28. That's really, it's not an IPA and it's not a mild, it's just kind of there, it gives you a little something that'll entertain you and keep your, you know, keep your, uh, your, your interest. Um, and uh, you want it easy drinking, you know, it's got great eye appeal, it is easy drinking, um, it's got a great package, um, so it's got a lot going for it. So. One of the little secret things we did put in your beer was uh, 
we used uh, what they call Belgian candy sugar. So what we did was we used a light colored Belgian candy sugar, which is not done in a lot of, a lot of beers in America, but it is done in a lot of beers in, uh, in England and over in Europe. Uh, so about 55 pounds went in per batch. Um, what it does is it dries the beer out a little bit. It makes it very nice and drinkable, but it also helps you with your alcohol, achieving your alcohol levels too. But it gives it a different profile than say just grain would. Um, that is very unique to this beer. We only do a few of our other beers with that kind of uh, component added to it. So from what I understand, this beer was, po uh, was uh, brewed in honor of Paul Revere. Uh, I believe it's going to be debuted by a large coming out party. Uh, uh, yet to be a predetermined location right around Paul Revere's birthday which I believe is about the third week in April. I don't know the exact date <laughs> but I know it's going to be a good time so if you're looking to enjoy a really good red beer, something new and something specific to WAF, come to the party.